Despite popular belief, gas cars are still being sold and electric cars are just at the beginning of their life. So today I'm going to compare a gas car and an electric car that cost almost the same. I'm going to present the facts and you're going to have to let me know which one you would pick down in the comments. Partnered up with Omaze who's giving away a Model X Plaid. You can enter for a chance to win this and support a great cause, Reverb. Reverb empowers musicians and millions of fans to take action on pressing environmental and social issues. Since 2004, Reverb partners with artists, festivals, and venues to reduce their environmental footprints on today's most pressing environmental issues. They've worked with artists like Billie Eilish, Maroon 5, Pink, Harry Styles, Dave Matthews Band, and the Lumineers. Reverb has greened over 350 tours and 6,000 concert events and eliminated 280,000 tons of CO2. Now the car I'm sure you're all familiar with, 1,020 horsepower, 2.5 seconds to 60, and costs all in around $150,000. And if you win this in the United States, all your taxes will be paid for. Hey, if one of you guys wins this, let's meet up and drive it around. I'd love to do that. Since 2021, Omaze has given 27,194,664 dollars to charity. 131 nonprofits were supported, and there have been 6,000. 462 winners. Let's make the 6,463rd winner one of my subscribers. Click on the link below in the description box to enter into this sweepstakes for a chance to win the Model X Plaid. So my audience is very familiar with the Tesla. We'll get into that in a second. Let's go over the Audi. So it's a 2022 Audi A3 40 TFSI Quattro. It costs, with all of its options, $44,440. The Tesla costs $46,000. $990. Now the packages on this are you had to pay $600 for the Manhattan Gray Metallic. It has the Premium Plus package which has a whole bunch of features. It has the Technology package and it also has the 18 inch wheel package which consists of 18 inch wheels. It also has the interior style package which we will get to in a minute. Now on electric cars, range is extremely important. So let's talk about the range in the Audi. 465 miles of range is what it's currently showing on a full tank. Standard range Tesla, 273 miles of range. Now, if you own a Tesla or if you've driven an electric vehicle, you know it's very hard to achieve the factory range in the real world. So realistically, you can maybe get between 220 and 250 miles of range. On this, you're basically gonna get the range that is advertised. I don't know why that is. That's just how life is right now. I think eventually electric cars will get there. We're just not there yet. Now, stylistically, from the exterior, they look very similar. However, the Tesla is a little more usable. It has a frunk and it also has a sub compartment in the back. Now, in the Audi, there's this thing, it's called an engine. So there's a four cylinder engine mated to a seven speed S-Tronic transmission in here. This is all wheel drive. This is rear wheel drive. If you want to get the all wheel drive long range Tesla, that takes you up to about $60,000 for a long range Tesla Model 3, which is currently sold out until 2023. The A3 moving around the rest of the car, you know, surprisingly for me, a lot of times I would say Tesla is very bland looking to other cars, but I would say the Tesla actually looks slightly more aggressive than this Audi A3 with the 18 inch wheel package. So the, the Manhattan gray metallic, you know, kind of a bland under the radar. Headlights are beautiful. Audi always does an excellent job with headlights and all of that. So that all looks good. It, it does have a sunroof and slightly panoramic roof. You can see it kind of ends right here. And the Tesla, obviously full glass from windshield all the way back. One downside to Tesla having that glass is the heat that comes in in the summer. Now, unfortunately I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. So it's like one of the hottest places in the world. So that's kind of a big problem. My recommendation is get a sunshade for the summer. I'll have one linked down in the description, but there's no cover for it from the factory. Whereas cars like this, you know, you can open it up when you want. If it's too hot, you just press the button and it closes back up. There's a shade on the interior of the car. And that's just a luxury feature, especially German car companies. They build cars better than anyone else in the world. That's just a nice feature that we have. Moving around to the rear of the car. This is where the gasoline goes. Not, you don't plug this in. Just making sure everyone doesn't get confused. Quattro stands for four in German, and it means all wheel drive. 
Also, you'll notice there are no exhaust pipes that are showing back here, which is kind of interesting. I actually like that look for a non-performance car. I think it's smart to just simplify the back of the car and keep it clean, so that all looks good. So a pretty standard package here, four-door, subcompact car, looks really good. On to the Tesla. The hubcaps are currently removed, so these 10-spoke wheels look really good. There's hubcaps you can put over that will get you another 5% more in efficiency. As we start to creep to the interior of the car. Here's a look at the trunk of the Audi. On the surface, it looks like they're about the same size, but as I put this up, you can see there's actually a spare tire underneath there. So you do get a spare tire with the Audi. You do not get a spare tire in the Model 3. What you do get though, is a sub compartment, which is right under here. And also if you're looking for any types of floor mats for the Model 3, 3D mats makes the absolute best. I'll have them linked with a discount code in the description. They're the absolute best, it's not even close. And then there's this sub compartment here, which you can store a lot of stuff in, especially on road trips, which I think is a nice feature that Teslas have that is, I utilize a lot. Onto the front of the car, the frunk, Again, this is the safest part of the car because it's very hard to break into this area, but it's also not cooled. Uh, but you do have this storage area. You can see the Andrew has a couple things up here. He has this compressor, which is great for blowing your tires up on the road, your Tesla plug, and some paper towels. So that's that. Now, as we move to the interior of the car, here's something I want you to think about. These cars both have their benefits and their downsides. I'm very interested to see what you guys decide down in the description. The Tesla obviously has its infotainment system, the big 15 inch screen in the middle of the car. There are constantly updates. Hey, let's just hit, let's just have alarms go off all day. There's constantly updates being sent to that screen. So the current Teslas, the 22s and the 23s that are coming out are the same software that's in this 21. Now with the Audi, you're stuck with what it comes with from the factory. You can rarely get upgrades after that, and that's one benefit that Tesla has. So, so far, the range is far less, and it takes longer on road trips. Much easier to live with and adjust to on a daily basis, almost double the range of the Tesla. Let's move to the interior of the car and take a look there. So we're gonna start with Audi's full digital dash. Personally, I think they do this better than anyone. I think it looks really good. If you wanna change the view and reduce your tachometer and speedometer, you simply hit the view button and they shrink and you get more information about what day it is, oil temperatures, miles per gallon. And then to scroll through that, you simply pull down on this. It gives you fuel level. We're currently at full, showing 465 miles. And you scroll down more. This is short-term memory. I just did 10 miles. We got 25.7 miles per gallon. And that's actually because it's been, we idled it here for a little bit. When I was here, it was like 34 miles per gallon when we initially arrived. So long-term memory, that's 431 miles on this was 27.6 miles per gallon. So that's pretty good. This is interesting. It's a gauge that shows how much your air conditioning is taking off your gallons per hour. So gallons per hour, it's under an eighth of a tank the way we currently have it running. If we turn it up, you can see that it actually starts to increase the higher you put it. So I think that's a really cool gauge that Audi puts in here. If we continue to scroll down, you can see the driver assistance systems. As I was driving on the highway here, I kind of just let the car drift. And when it gets to the edge of a lane line, it actually brings the car back to center. It will also show you what the traffic lights are currently showing. And as you're moving, it'll show speed limit signs there as well. So if we'll hit view again, we'll go back. And now we can also have the drive mode and there's comfort, auto, and dynamic. Dynamic is the most aggressive drive mode. And there's also individual where you can set it up. And it's nice that you still have those settings. Now, if you're looking at this area, it's very similar to a VW Golf. You have this now is the shifter where you currently just bump it back and forth. And that's how you get into different gear. I actually really like this. It just simplifies everything. To get into park, you simply press that button. You have your engine start stop, which is right here, nicely integrated. So here, this is all for the radios. If you go like this around the outside, it will turn the volume up or down, skip songs, go back and forth, mute or power off on the radio. I really like how clean this all is. You have your drive select button here, traction control, Auto start stop, that way you can save fuel when you're at a red light or something like that. Parking distance meter and also park assist. 
You also have heated seats. This turns the climate control off. If we did that, we'd be dead in five minutes. And that's kind of everything through there. And then I think this is just really clean looking the way Audi has it set up. It's also angled slightly toward the driver. So I like that it's easier as you're driving down the highway, you can easily click something here and, and see these big buttons that you're able to press. It's not like you're in the Tesla a lot of times, if you're trying to do one thing, you have to hit this little button. It can be frustrating at times. This is very nice that it's, it's really easy to just click and go in and out of back and forth. So I think they did a really nice job with this. I have my comfortable driving position in the front. I'm six feet tall sitting in the back. So I do have a little bit room here, but my head feels kind of, head and shoulder feel kind of cramped by this pillar right here. So let's see what it's like in the Model 3. Now, surprisingly in the rear of the Tesla, I have a little bit more room here in front of my knees, but I don't have as much room for my feet to move around. Also, in this area, I'm much less cramped. My shoulders have much more space and my head space is better. So, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a toss up between the two. The seat comfort is about the same in them. I guess it's just more my feet are cramped, but this space up here is more open than the Audi. So it's almost a tie in that sense. Additionally, there's two USB-C ports in the rear of the Model 3. It's the same for the A3, two USB-C ports. So as we're driving along here, the one thing that you will notice that the Audi does better is the suspension. They both have 18 inch wheels. The Audi just has better compression. Like when you go over uh, a big bump or you're heading into a driveway, the Audi just absorbs the bump better. Now the Model 3 isn't bad. It has 18 inch wheels. It's really not bad. Honestly, I think a lot of the rigidity in the car comes from the battery pack. So getting something like an aftermarket, aftermarket, get to my Jersey people. Getting something like an aftermarket suspension will help. It's not gonna totally solve the problem, but it will help. Apple CarPlay is incredible. I, I love how that all looks. And there's also some ambient lighting that runs along the perimeter of the car that again is nice. So I, I just really like this car. Now we're gonna put the drive mode into dynamic. So we're in the car's most aggressive, ooh, check this to the right here. That's one of those uh, Electrica, Mechanica, whatever, Solos they're called. Talk about a death trap, huh? Let's talk about a death, look at that thing. If, if a bicycle hit that, they would be in worse shape. <laughs> it's kind of cool from the back. I would just be scared driving that out on the highway. So we're gonna do a little acceleration pull here, leave the electric, electromechanica in the dust. Wow. Never mind. Uh, this thing's pretty slow. I didn't expect that. I have it fully pinned and it really, I'm gonna floor it. I'm kinda surprised at how un, peppy that is, especially in dynamic mode, which for Audi, usually on any model, certainly makes the car more responsive. It's very comfortable, it's very efficient, has excellent technology, and the interior is comfortable. Now, it's a little squatted in the back, so if you have a family, I recommend going up to an A4 or an A6. The A4, to me, is one of the best valued cars currently offered in the United States because it's a German-made car, it's got a well-tuned suspension, has the right amount of power and space in it. And the A3 is just like a good entry-level car for someone that's maybe single or younger. I feel like a lot of sorority girls in my college were driving A3s. That's just an observation. Yeah, the, it's just a really nice place to be in. I just think Audi does their infotainment systems better than BMW, better than Mercedes. It's really like, also these air vents right here are like a Lamborghini Urus, just has that kind of feel and look to them. So. Nice driving the A3, very comfortable. Let's hop in the Model 3 and see how that is. All right, so we're in the standard range Model 3. This is a 21, so the 22s get about 20 more miles of range, up to 273. They also have the LFP batteries, just like this one, meaning it's okay to charge at 200%. Yeah, just right off the bat, like when I floor this car, <laughs> like the traction chirps the tires in the back, it's quick, even though this is, the slowest Tesla, it's still to zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds. The new ones do it in 5.8, and that just helps with the range on the car. But like, my goodness, it's just such a night and day difference. I mean, to get up to speed, this is just so much better and smoother. Now, it's not like gas cars can't do this, and Audi certainly has good dual clutch transmissions. Just the A3, for some reason, is a very, very slow, um, and 
I just don't like that when you're merging onto a highway, you feel like you don't have enough power to get up to speed. So you really have to anticipate that. Whereas the Tesla, <laughs> like it's immediate. In that sense, this is much more smooth. The Audi has a much better suspension. I think the air conditioning works a little bit better to keep you cooler. I think Tesla's, the issue is with all the glass in them, it's just hard to keep them cool. I think the Model 3 is better. The Model Y, however, has so much space. So you know, you have the entire trunk that you're trying to cool down, and I think that's the issue. So the Model 3 is better than the Model Y in that sense. But compared to the A3, it's really tough because you, realistically, you're getting like 220 miles of range and then you have to wait to charge. Whereas the A3, gas powered car, you go to the gas station, fill up in five minutes and you're on your way. And you can actually get 460 miles of real world range. So it's up to you. If you're gonna be riding around the city and you don't wanna have emissions, maybe this is for you. Or maybe you're like, I don't wanna deal with electric cars yet. I'm gonna wait till they're developed a little bit more and I'm gonna get a nice entry-level German car, the Audi A3. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm very interested to see this considering they cost the same, they're about the same size with dimensions, and they have various technologies, like the Audi has Apple CarPlay, which a lot of people love, including myself, and this does not. You have to go into the Tesla cult. You fall in line and you use what Tesla has and you shut up. If you like this video, click on this video. It's me driving the Audi e-tron GT RS, which is arguably the coolest electric car I've driven. Click this video right here. You'll learn a lot and you'll love that car.